Ohio-born Sam Hornish Jr. was raised on the traditions of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Saturday, he took pole for next Sunday's 90th Indy 500, then said he'd trade both his IRL titles, 10 poles, and 14 victories for one next Sunday in the 500. But on Sunday, Hornish provided drama on bump day by spinning and reaching the wall after turning the fastest lap of the day. But because it came in his backup car, Speedy Sam retains that precious pole. Yes, that's how much it means to these guys. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Speed News Sunday. As we set the stage for Memorial Day weekend to come, I'm Bob Varsha. And I'm Drew Johnson. Bob, I noticed that you didn't say Hornish would trade in the money he's won. Oh, no. I know that number is nearly two million at Indy alone, but certainly Sam has been the best uh, car at the Brickyard. He's got his first pull today, bump day, and the cars running were at least 10 mile an hour slower than Hornish's pull pace. And 32 spots filled Saturday. The podium at the Brickyard showing only enough room for 33. The question: Who would get that final spot? Brazilian Tiago Medeiros, perhaps the 204 Indy Pro Series champion, crashed in practice Thursday. Some of his Crew guys went nearly for 40 straight hours without sleep to make repairs. Tiago clocks in at more than 2.15. His lone challenge, Marty Roth, who spun several times this month without hitting anything. His luck running out, Roth would smack the wall. 20 minutes left in the session. Ryan Briscoe showed up expecting to get a shot in an A.J. Foyt backup car. Never happened as bump day would come to an end with Briscoe rolling off in the golf cart with no ride. Just start working on race setup, trying to get the car, you know, handling just like we'd like it to, and it found out that we weren't quite as close to it as what we thought we were. But um, you know, just got in there behind some traffic, which you're going to get a lot of that on race day. And we were slowed down and going relatively slow when you talk any car speeds, you know, about 205 miles an hour, which you know, compared to yesterday going through turn one at you know 230, it's it's quite a bit slower. But back end just broke loose and. Uh, I found out that uh, I can't do the slide sideways and, and stuff quite as good as Marty Roth can. I didn't think that I was going to have a second chance to put this deal together. The setup that we had from the other car didn't work very well with this car. We had to find the last, those last tunings to adapt myself to the car and everything was good. We made a lot of changes today and, uh, you know, there, some were for the good. And, uh, you know, I just needed a little bit of time to work with the car and, and kind of get it up to speed. And, you know, we were out of time. We, we had to line it up for qualifying. So, yeah, we were pushing a little bit, and it just didn't want to turn into corner one when I wanted to. SpeedTV.com's Robin Miller has experienced five decades of bump days at Indy. Now, the problem there is there hasn't been much bumping in recent years. Here is Robin's rant on what went down late today. It hasn't been bump day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for about three years. It's been fill day because there's just not enough competition, frankly, and you could easily see this becoming a one-day event. Qualify all 33 cars like they almost did yesterday because this is pretty much a waste of time. The big story today, well, it was P.J. Chesson's tattoo. People ran around like freaks trying to interview him because there was nothing else to talk about because of the lack of competition. That's why unification would be good because we'd actually have maybe 45 or 50 cars going for 33 slots instead of this Mickey Mouse stuff of piecing together guys that don't have any business in race cars. Thankfully, Marty Roth hit the wall and won't be in the race, so now the IRL doesn't have to worry about how they're going to not get him in the race. They didn't want Marty Roth in the race to start with. He was running fast enough to probably make it. He alleviated that problem by crashing, so now they don't have to worry about getting rid of P.J. Jones, a legit legitimate race driver, Tiago Medeiros, who's an IPS champion. But I can tell you this, the drama here, there's no drama, folks. Hadn't been for a long time. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. We're just getting started with our Indy coverage. Still to come, hear from former Indy 500 winners. There are six in this year's field. Derek Daly will join Robin Miller live at IMS for expert analysis. We'll also run you through the entire 33-car field. Bonus coverage, Sam Hornish on wind tunnel with Dave Despain. Let's see, Foyt, Unser, Mears, Rutherford, names that are cemented in my mind because of their excellence at the Indy 500. This year, six former winners in the field, and tonight we get their thoughts on the race that turns drivers into legends.
You spent three and a half hours fighting off everybody trying to win the race. You have one lap by yourself where nobody's yelling at you. Then the minute you get out of the car, you're the Indy 500 winner. So it's, it's, it's like being in the middle of a tornado. You're very busy and your life changes. Little Al wins by just a few tenths of a second. Every competitor here, uh, you know, if they win Indy, it'll, it'll change their life forever. But for me, you know, the, the desire as a, as a rookie and, and every year I'm back here, you know, I want to be successful at Indy. And uh, if you do that, then everything is right in the world. For all the, all the knowledge that you had from the place, the history that you uh, understand, and uh, it's, it's a great feeling. And, but again, I know how it feels, so that's why I want to do it again. Buddy Rice will lead the field into turn two. I want to come back here and win again just as bad as I wanted to win the first time. So I don't think that competitive part of me is, uh, ever leaves. I always want to win. And like I said, I'd like to uh, get a second one here, but I know how how uh, difficult that could be. And the pubs are open in the UK. Dan Weldon has just won the Indianapolis 500. I wasn't sure what to think. I put so much pressure on myself and was so motivated to win last year because I hadn't won it. But I was interested to see how I would be when I came back. And I, I think actually I'm more motivated because you see what happens to you when, when you win the race and you, and you don't want that to go. So I certainly think I'm uh, more motivated than I've ever been to win this race. It's amazing about this place. It's all about winning. You know, I mean, uh, I remember when, when, when we won, you know, the hometown, everybody, they'll, they'll throw a parade for you, you know. Uh, when, you, when you finish second, about a, about a month after the race, you'll be around your hometown and they'll say, hey, buddy, are you still racing? I say, well, yeah, I just took second in the 500. But nobody remembers second. Well, check out our six winners, Hunter Jr., Cheever, and Lazier, the savvy veterans. Little Al tends to finish better on average. Castro Neves has been efficient. Two wins and five starts and no finishes lower than ninth. The Brazilian has as good of a chance as anyone to win this year. Now, Robin Miller and Derek Daly join us live from the Brickyard. Robin, we heard what you had to say earlier about bump day. All in all, pretty uneventful, eh? I would say Derek Daly was in this race six times, and he, he knows what the last hour used to be like. It was the cruelest hour in auto racing, and your heart was in your throat the whole time. And today we had one qualifier, no bumping, and this man ate a whole bottle of no-dos. And you come in with some anticipation that something w with human drama will happen. It didn't happen today, so it was disappointment for most people who came to watch something spectacular. And for the people that keep saying, why do they have to have one series? Because if they had one series, there might be 40 or 50 cars here going for 33 spots, and it would be exciting again. And then, if not, if it never gets back together, make this a one-day qualifying thing. And I think the thing that's interesting today was, the IRL won't tell you, but they didn't want Marty Roth in the race because they don't think he's ready. He spun five or six times in two years, and he finally hit the wall today with a half hour to go. So that alleviated their problem. They didn't have to worry about who was going to bump him because he took himself out. And, and, it's, and I think a lot of people, he's a nice guy. He spent 12 years out of a race car. He needs to be a team owner, not a driver. And you can see he missed the turn-in point for turn one by about 20 feet, which is a clear uh, indication that he ran out of talent at the type of speed he was trying to do to qualify. But Brian Barnhart threatened him, if you don't put another driver in, we're not going to let you into this race anyway. So he made it easy by wadding the thing up all the way through turns one and two. Okay, no more doom and gloom. Now we're going to talk about the race, and the race will be good. But what's going to make us think that it's not going to be Team Penske for the 14th time or Target Chip Ganassi for the second time? Well, I just for kicks and, and grins, I looked up the last 13 years of statistics, and it shows that this is the biggest spread front to back in those 13 years, which tells me Sam Hornish on about lap 15 will begin to lap cars that are at the back of the field already. So that does not bode well for what we would call a competitive Indy 500. Okay, now remember, the last two years, Andretti Green Racing has dominated this series. Series. Now we're talking about Andretti Green Racing, Dario Franchitti, and Tony Kanaan, the champion two years ago, as the sleepers or the dark horses. Which is amazing. They have not been on the pace, on the front running pace at any time during practice or qualifying here since we've seen it. I mean, it has been Ganassi and Penske, particularly Penske. Of course, until that mishap today, we thought they were Penske perfect. Right. And I think the other thing is, is that 
You've got three guys coming back here, Michael Andretti, Eddie Cheever, Al Hunter Jr., all former champions. They haven't been in a race car two, three, and four years. Does any of them have a shot? I think, in fairness, Michael Andretti is probably the one with the most shot at running at the front here. You see Michael here. He's not been out of the car that long. He walks into a team that, of course, has been so successful. So he will be the dark horse. I do not expect Cheever or Unser Jr. to be anywhere near the pace on race day. And you know we hear all the time we're force-fed this stuff that 20 or 22 guys could win this race. Uh, not unless there's a 20 or 22 car pileup. There's there's eight guys that pri probably can win this race. Maybe nine. Possibly Thomas Schechter. It depends. But that would be. A, I think he'd be my real long shot. And the big story last year, Danica Patrick, will not be as big a story this year. Her car is just nowhere near as good as it was last year. But I'll tell you, she did an outstanding job to drag that thing around to be in the top 10 in qualifying. Okay, I'm done dragging him around. Back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks, guys. And, of course, Robin and Derek will be back at the Speedway next weekend to bring us the story behind the Indy 500. All right, and with bump day complete, the field of 33 now locked in. No one's surprised about that front row. Ganassi and Pinsky have had the four best cars all season. Pinsky, the two fastest to qualify at Indy. The Ganassi guys considered requalifying Saturday to get sixth six gear kicking. They decided they might hurt each other more than they'd gain on Sam and Elio. On row two, former series champions Scott Dixon and Tony Kanaan, plus last year's 500 runner-up, Vitor Mira. Keep an eye out for him. Row three, Kaska and Matsura, veteran Scott Sharp, and top rookie Marco Andretti. And you just heard the gentleman mention that Danica Patrick got those fast laps to her 224.674, and just slightly faster than Thomas Schechter in row four. Row five, Mike Landretti worked a lot on his car on this Sunday. He will start outside 2004 winner Buddy Rice. Andretti green teammates Brian Herta and Dario Franchitti share row six with late entry Max Pappas on row seven. Mad Max's car owner, 98 winner Eddie Cheever, rookie PJ Chesson, and Felipe Giafone, who went from 33rd to 15th last year in his only IRL start. Bucknum, AJ's son Larry, and Jacques Lazier in row 8. Row 9, we find 96 winner Buddy Lazier with two-time winner Al Unser Jr. Row 10 features Californian Roger Yazakawa and one-off starters Ayrton Dare and Stefan Gregoire. And on the 11th and final row, second-generation starters Ari Leyendijk Jr. and P.J. Jones, plus Tiago Maderos, who qualified Sunday, and there was no bumping. And as promised, the stage now set for Memorial Day weekend. And, of course, we'll be back next week to recap it for you. I'm Drew Johnson. And I'm Bob Barsha. Don't forget, Formula One practice at Monaco starts Thursday right here on Speed. And we'll see you then.